Welcome to another edition of Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Security remains the number one priority for governments around the world. Whether it's in Sri Lanka, which is on red alert still after a number of bombs went off on Easter Sunday, killing more than 200 people, or it's here in Nigeria where partnerships with developed countries are centered around fighting extremism. Recently, the UK Foreign Secretary visited northeast Nigeria to once again prove Britain's uh, commitment towards ending Boko Haram attacks and fringes of attacks by other militants affiliated to the Islamic State in West Africa. Mr. Jeremy Hunt visited Meduguri, one of the hotspots of these attacks, displacing more than two million people. He shared his thoughts on the situation there and the UK's support for the World Food Programme to providing long-term solutions for those affected by the violence. I'm here in Maiduguri in northeast Nigeria, where the conflict uh, which has involved both Boko Haram and Islamic State in West Africa has meant that two million people have been displaced, living in effectively refugee camps. And the UK is supporting the World Food Programme, which is doing an extraordinary job. We've given £150 million since the start of the conflict. And they've been able to feed 1.5 million people as a result of their activities here. And I think what this shows is that in any conflict situation, uh, the first people who lose out are the local population. And there can be no development, no escape from grinding poverty unless there's security. The UK is said to be providing a substantial and increasing package of security, humanitarian and development support for Nigeria. And this includes training and capacity building for Nigerian armed forces deploying in the northeast. The UK has trained over 30,000 Nigerian troops in recent years. It's also helping the Nigerian government to address root causes of the conflict in the northeast. But Mr. Hunt says Nigeria needs to plan for civilian-led stabilization and developments in areas where the military has ousted terrorist groups. The week also ended on a high for Nigeria as top diplomats and lawyers secured the release of Zainab Aliou, the student of Maitama Sule University, Kano, who was arrested and detained in Saudi Arabia since December last year when a banned drug, Tramadol, was found in her bag on arrival in Saudi Arabia. Another Nigerian, Ibrahim Abuakar, was also arrested alongside Ms. Aliou. The Nigerian government announced on Tuesday it had secured Ms. Zainab's release and that of Mr. Ibrahim would follow after. We have passed documents relating to the trial of the suspects that were arrested in Kano and passed also information on the judicial process and all that. And uh, the ministry has, uh, like I said, continued to uh, use all available channels, uh, especially in this context, the diplomatic channel, uh, while also pursuing the, the legal process from this end and connecting it with the other uh, process in Saudi. Um, all these efforts that have been undertaken by the ministry and by the mission in Jeddah, I am very pleased now to inform you that uh, in the last couple of minutes, about 30 minutes or so ago, this Zainab has been released to our mission in Saudi. And uh, that is uh, a news that uh, I believe will be very, very heartwarming. According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, a lot of silent diplomatic efforts led to where we are now. And they're pretty happy with the Saudi government for not executing these innocent Nigerians. I spoke to former Permanent Secretary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi, last week after hearing news of Zainab's release. I think this is different from other cases uh, that I'm sure you have in mind, particularly because um, uh, the Nigerian government was able to provide evidence uh, to show that uh, the young lady was innocent of the crime. And the Saudis did very well by listening to uh, the Nigerian government and the arguments that were made by uh, the High Commission, I mean the embassy in, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, and they looking very clearly at the evidence before them. So I think we applaud both the Saudis and the Nigerian uh, authorities for 
at least align, uh, ensuring that justice has been done to or actually poor innocent girl would have lost uh, you know her life unfortunately but we thank god that did not happen the Saudi law is very clear when it comes to drug trafficking but that does not mean that um, <clears throat> an innocent person would be executed i i, I think they, they they do follow the due process of going through all the evidence available and then taking the those involved to court and in this specific case i think all evidence from Nigeria points to the fact that uh, the drugs were planted in her, you know, uh, in her, in one of her, the suitcases of the family. As I understand, and I think she was traveling with her mom and uh, another sister. So if it's true and the uh, evidence that it is true that it dro the drugs were planted, it, it, it's a matter of the Saudi authorities looking at the evidence and agreeing that, well, She's not really a drug trafficker or involved in uh, the trade. She just happens to be an innocent, uh, an innocent victim. But, but having said that, I think our focus should be on, on, you know, on our own side of the of the bargain. You know, if this is happening at uh, our airports, it, it could actually happen to anybody else. And this is why the authorities need to put in more security at the airport.